I'm here with Rad and his little buddy, Cora. Uh, Cora, I was gonna say Kayla. Uh, <laughs> Cora is over here chewing off camera. And this is the roadmap to success. Um, this is actually kind of a double session. We did a uh, behavior session as well as a puppy head start. I'm gonna do the puppy head start stuff first. Um, they have the sheet, so you can go through all the stuff on the sheet. Um, remember this critical socialization period, you only have until 14 weeks, potentially up to 16 weeks. That's, as soon as I leave here, you guys should be downloading that check or a checklist and then sorting it uh, by importance and then start to knock out a minimum of 10 of those uh, a, a day. And the way it would be is something like, maybe I gently snap a bag, a plastic bag open, give the dog a treat. If I snap it open and the dog gets startled and moves away, then I would snap it a little bit lighter. And but the idea is eventually I wanna go snap and give the dog the treat. So snapping the bag open means I'm gonna get a treat or sweeping the broom or the microwave dinging or whatever it is. There's a whole bunch of stuff unless you'll never be surprised. Um, the, because you potentially might have kids, I would give her around a lot of kids, go to playgrounds, uh, sit, and sit down on the bench and let her watch the other kids. Every time she looks at the kids, say yes and then give her a treat. So just looking at kids gets me a treat. And while you're doing this, judge the kids in the playground. Is there a kid that kind of is, has nice energy and listens to his parents and is good. Maybe, you know, ask his parents, hey, you know, we're trying to socialize our dog. Would you mind your, your kid giving your kid, you know, we really like how well your kid behaved. We were hoping that you could like maybe pet our dog, give it some treats. Sure, complimenting parents and saying that the kid is well behaved well, is a great way to get them in there. And you are being sincere because you observed all the other kids. You're like, that one's a hellion. He's like me, I wouldn't let him meet the dog. And so now your puppy has these experiences. Now remember puppies also go, also go through uh, fear periods. Uh, their first year of their life. If they're in a fear period and something bad happens, that might stick with them for the rest of its life. So when she's young, especially if she's under like five months, I wouldn't take risks on certain things. Just, you know, if it's, I want to hold your child, hold your puppy, and you know that she can't, oh, I got to hold it right now, but you can kind of pet. The kids are like, okay. You know, they don't need to have everything. And remember, don't force her to meet either one of them to meet anybody that they don't want to meet. If they want to walk away, let them. And then take a mental note of what that person looks like and then find a friend or somebody that you can hire, maybe an actor, and who can come and portray that role and you can help your dog practice being around them and they're in on it with you. If you have a real guest come in your house, your dog doesn't react, you feel guilty, my dog's not being nice and you know, we almost feel like I should sh punish the dog to make the guest feel bad. No, just go through your phone with people you haven't talked to in a while, his crown, we haven't seen for a while, we got a new puppy, we have this dog guy come by and said our puppy needs to socialize around people uh, that are, you know, with certain character, we love you, why don't you come over, we'll get a six pack, we'll hang out in the deck, you haven't seen a new place anyways, you need our puppy. They come over with the intention to help you. You're not being a host. They're here, they, stop, can you hold your hand this way? Can you turn this way? They're there to do whatever, and then so you're setting your dog up for success instead of trying to train your dog in the real world situation, which is not really very realistic or productive. Um, let me see, um, potty training is listed there. Um, the handling exercise, try to have a number of people doing that handling exercise with her. And so remember, you're gonna first hold the treat here to distract her, then touch and say your mark word, uh, like I did in the video for you, but eventually you're gonna touch, then get, then say touch, mark the word, then get the treat. And then gradually make it more and more invasive. Instead of just flipping the ear up at first, flip it and hold it for two seconds and then say your mark word. And eventually hold it and kind of dig it around a little bit and then say your mark word. And then anytime your puppy moves away, I'm not comfortable with that, back up to an easier level of success, practice there. And then once the puppy's comfortable, then move forward a little bit. So look at any sort of mistake your dog behaves, in, puppy behaves in a way that you don't want is a learning opportunity for us to recreate the situation and set all of the factors up, uh, the dog up for success by putting everything in her favor. Um, also remember exercising her, uh, having these things is gonna be helpful, but for her, remember for puppies, five minutes of, uh, if we're directing the exercise, five minutes for each month she's eight. So she, at this two and a half months, should be exercising longer than about 12 minutes. Playdates, I would make the same thing. So if you have a puppy playdate, if they're both three month old puppies, 15 minutes maximum. And we look at it like, oh my God, it took me 45 minutes to get, to get here, it's LA. The last, the end of the play date is what they're gonna remember the brightest. So if you have a 50 minute play date and the first 49 minutes are awesome, the last minute is bad, that's what I'm gonna remember. So uh, if you do start a play date and they don't go, it doesn't go along well, for a play date, I'd like to have the visitor dog be able to sniff around first. Make sure the area is clean, there's no poop and stuff because of vaccinations. And then uh, bring the dogs out. And if they don't get along right away, take them out and walk them together, parallel walking. So dogs, these are the dogs walking on the street. They're not being able to interact with each other, but they are smelling, seeing, and hearing each other. And then after, then if you need a long walk, walk four, four houses and turn around and walk back, and then put them in the yard and see if that works. And just like us, dogs don't like everybody they meet. If you meet a puppy and they don't get along, that's okay. Um, but uh, remember, the goals, we'd like her to meet five dogs a week, 
preferably more puppies than adult dogs, and a variety of different shapes and sizes, fluffy dogs, tall dogs, old dogs, and so on, um, have at least one play date a week, and then meet 25 people of different shapes, sizes, and stripes as well until she is about uh, five or six months old. Uh, now, the puppy and play uh, socialization we'd like and dog socialization, we'd like that to continue past the first year of their life. I've had a lot of clients, they socialize the puppy, the heck out of the puppy for the first six months, they're like, she's good, and then stop it, and the dog turns. So think of your time now as an investment. The things that you do now, you'll be at the benefits of for the next 10 years, either in a good way or a bad way. So it's up to you to determine what type of dog you're gonna get. All right, for him, we went over, uh, we started off with exercise. Um, uh, the exercise, uh, we could do sniff walks. Remember, they burn more energy by sniffing than walking. You can get a doggy backpack weighted up. Um, make sure you check with your vet to make sure your vet is okay with the mobility. And I would not do a doggy backpack. And for her, again, make sure you get her x-rays, her uh, back legs, uh, hip dysplasia is what we want to specifically ask her vet about. Mm -hmm. Just the way her, she's sitting on her back legs, so it makes me a little concerned. Uh, and the vet might say, I don't want her to take stairs for a while, so you might have to put the baby gates up and just carry her up and down the stairs. That's a short-term thing, but again, a long-term benefit. Uh, all right, so uh, let me see, we could also play tug of war. If they're doing tug, tug, and you see one of them is gonna go grab it, say tug, tug, before they grab it, or whatever the word is you wanna use. Then they say tug, tug, and they're playing with each other, you say yes, and then pet them a little bit, or just the tugging becomes the reinforcement. But that's a great way for you to burn energy with them, or they burn energy with each other. Playing fetch is a great way to do it. Remember, to get the dog to drop something, you have to earn their trust, and the guardians have been taking things away from the dog, and so that's why Rad is interested in dropping. Yes. We just worked on this a little bit with him, and now you look how quickly he did it. Now, I don't have the baggage the guardians have. I haven't tried to take things from him. So when he has something like that, yeah, I'm not gonna reward you that because you need to take it up again. But be careful, when she comes over, that's gonna make him less likely to drop it. So if you're practicing this, make sure she's not here because uh, you're just adding an extra factor. Yes. Yes. That wasn't quite a drop, but you know I was going to share it anyways. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, for take, give, and drop, what you want to do, like a bully stick, hold it out and say take, and then offer it to him. He takes it. Say mark word, yes, let go of it. Show you have a treat. Make sure she's not around. And just wait for him to drop it. And when he drops it, say yes, put the treat in his mouth. And after you've wrapped, and then, and then, uh, if, and then I would do that, I'd let him pick it up the first several times so you guys can rebuild the trust. But eventually you hold it up, use a drop, uh, and he drops it. He has to put the treat in his mouth, pick it up, say take. He says take, he, and he grabs it, you say yes, and release it, and then re repeat that. And after a while, you can ask him to drop, and he's happy to, to spit it out. If you do have to take the thing away from him, make sure you get some bully sticks or something so when you do take the thing away, you're not physically grabbing it from him, and you're giving him something afterwards of equal or greater value. So um, let me see, uh, uh, you guys want to also do the doggy steer master, again, not with her, and check with your vet for him to make sure he's okay with uh, doing that. So those are forms of physical exercise. There's also mental stimulation. You can uh, chew on things like this. You can lick a lick mat, a con filled with peanut butter. Um, uh, feeding out of a snuffle mat is a nice way to drain energy by each meal. Uh, the Tricky Trainer Omega Paw Treat Ball is up there. Uh, that's another way to burn some energy. Training is a great way to burn some energy. Scent games, which you should Google, is a great way to burn some energy. Remember, we also did cooking in the corner. Remember, for cooking in the corner, we're also, after we, th we say hunt and throw the treats, we mark each time the dog gets up the treat. Remember, that's unusual. We usually say the marker word, then they get the treat. They should almost never come at the same time except for this exercise. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the dog gets done, you say come, or whatever it is, and the dog runs over to you, you say yes and give them the treat. So you're building in a recall as well. Um, let me see. Uh, t -t 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 we also went over marker words. Um, yes is the marker word. Um, the priming or loading, uh, you should only have to do that one or two times. I think you're probably going to be, probably after today, you guys should be good. Maybe do it tomorrow as well. By the time you see this, it probably should be up. Yes. Um, let me see. We also uh, uh, went over using the clicker. So uh, the clicker's great as well, but you know, you could use either one. Um, we, see, we also went over the hand targeting exercise. I have a video on how to do that. We'll practice that one to the point where you can have them come from a great distance. And if you want, you could even come up with a different word for each one. For him, it's target. Maybe for her, it's boop. So that way, if they're together, you say boop. She runs over. He doesn't know that. You, do you want to do that? A different cue for each command? No. But for some, like I do it for uh, stay, the release word. So that way, I can put two dogs in a stay and say release or freedom. And each dog has a unique word. That's really helpful. Um, let me see. Uh, so the hand targeting, I've got a video on that. I'm happy to share with you. But that's a great one to do with guests as well. 
So maybe if you have a guest come over, he's a little bit aloof of, you guys play the hand targeting exercise. At first, with your, you're alternating your sides, then you're doing from a husband to wife, and eventually then you incorporate the friend, and the dog's just running over, touching his nose. But what happens is the dog is initiating the contact. If you have a friend comes over and they're trying to pet your dog to show that you're the dog I'm a good person, well, you're, I think you're creepy, and you're, why, I'm walking away, why do you keep on following me? Well, if I go like this, the dog comes to me, the dog's giving implicit consent. Remember also for signs of consent, um, so when I want somebody to, uh, if I want to meet a dog, I hold my hand out, not so they can smell me, I'm, look at I left that ballistic there too. Um, so I hold my hand out like this, he engaged, so I can reach to pet him. And at any point, if he starts pulling back or turning his head, he has the right to stop. I'm not going to chase him. And the more, if I reach like this and he turns his head to the side or lowers his head or backs away, he's saying, I don't want you to pet me. The more that I listen to him, yes, the more likely he's willing to do that. Normally, remember to pet under the chin here, here, here. I reached over the head here because I thought this, he might be confused I was going for his bully stick. So whenever possible, try to pet in this oval region. Um, be careful with your pronunciation. Say yes, not yes. Um, make a list of the command cues. Uh, the stuff that your dogs have now, as well as the stuff you want to teach your dog. We're going to be sending you the drips for uh, the emails for our puppy classes uh, for uh, Kaya. Right? Cora. Cora. Ugh, I get it. Right when I leave, I'll have it down. Um, we're going to send you all these lessons. You can do the same lessons with him. And I would have one of you guys, you watch the videos together. One of you go to the top, one of you go to the bottom, you practice with it, and then switch. And the next time you take one upstairs, so that way you're both practicing working the dogs, and the dogs know all the same stuff. So it's easy lessons. It's all force free and positive reinforcement. Let's teach him as well. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. What else do we go over? Um, Petting with a purpose and passive training. Remember, petting with a purpose is if the dog is initiate wants you to pet, or you would like to pet the dog. For about two months, three months, I want you to get in the habit of not petting the dog for without a reason. So if he nudges you or paws at you or barks at you, you tell him to sit. If he's already sitting, tell him to lay down. And only to say it once. If he doesn't do it, then I go back to reading the paper. I don't say anything, the dog is missing out. Play hard to get. Uh, if I say sit and he sits, then I pet in the, uh, say the mark word, pet anywhere in the oval region, pet as much or as little as you want. Use the watchword of uh, manners, means uh, if somebody comes in and sees I'm petting rat and stand up and say manners to me, they're saying, I think you might have forgotten to ask him to sit first. Even if I did it right, I would stop petting him, say sit, he sits, I say yes, and I would pet him on his shin, I would say, actually, I asked him to sit, when you flush the toilet, he stood up, but I continued petting him, thanks, I do forget sometimes to pet with a purpose. After about three months, you should be in the habit of doing that, and you should be doing it on your own. And I remember, after a while, he will start coming and sitting in front of you to prepay. When he does, make sure you pet him for doing that. Otherwise, you can go back to nudging your pawing and all the rest of that stuff. Um, also, with hand targeting, if he keeps on putting his paw in your hand, remember to walk away so that he's on all fours and not sitting when he's doing it. That'll make it more of a nose thing. Uh, let me see. Um, uh, so that's petting with a purpose. If you want to pet the dog, your dog wants you to pet. Your and paycheck, or, or excuse me, uh, uh, manners is your way of saying, you're, I think you might not be petting with a purpose. The other flip side of that is that celebrating. So celebrating is the watchword. So if somebody says celebrate to me, I just say my word, yes, and I pet the dog as fast as I can. I don't need to know what it is. My partner saw it, they're telling me. I'm just kind of completing the loop. And eventually then I, I want to start recognizing, yes. That's, that could be celebrating right there. My dog's crash means to lay down. Flop means to lay down on your side. Pancake means lay down upon your back. So I have a specific cue for each one of these. He did it on his own. I recognize within that two second window, said the marker word impeded him. That makes him more likely. So laying on my side is something that this weirdo in the blue shirt likes as well. And so after a while, he's more likely to want to do that. But we're taking out all the ambiguity. So now the dogs know what it is that you, what you want and don't want because of the marker words. Um, and remember with petting the purpose, and, and, uh, it's really teaching your dogs how to say please or thank you is how I want you to interpret that lesson. Remember for us as kids, our parents probably taught us thousands and thousands of times Dogs are probably going to need a couple hundred repetitions, but after a while, they will start sitting to ask for it. But celebrating is waiting for the dog to do organically what you want. I taught one of my dogs, actually, I think the dog whose face I'm wearing here, how to grumble. His name is Quest. When I come home, he's excited, so I would ignore him because I don't want to reinforce that behavior. And then when he calmed down, I would say yes and pet him. After a while, one day I did that, and he was, he was still full of beans. He was, oh, and I thought that was funny as heck. So I said yes, and I pet him. Now if he wants attention to me, he comes over and goes, sits and if I don't see it he goes arr, 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 arr. and now I go like this and give him a treat so now if it's your birthday I hold up my camera and I go hey Quest what's going on and off camera I go like this he goes arr, arr. and I'm like yes it is a birthday arr. it's not nice to ask girls how old they are Quest arr. I am not regifting and then I post this on their face but how would I teach a dog to grumble I waited for him to do it on his own and I marked and rewarded that behavior to let him know mm -hmm. that that is something I like and will get you a reward 
but the reward is really important. Remember to get three levels of treats? I've been, I would recommend you get the Charlie Bears, and Charlie is, is spelled with two E's. Uh, is your low level treat or your mid level treat? And I would get like a cookie treat, not milk bones, but like old leather hub or something that's cookie treat that you can use for the lowest level. These are your mid level. And then you get the tricky trainers that I believe for the highest level. Um, let me see what else. Um, to do a positive or after. Use that whenever they're doing something up, then, then offer this. Or give him something, some reason to do it. Puppy wants to come over. Yes, I saw it. Now, the puppy's behavior, if you watch right now, Puppy has taken a wide berth because he has that. Yes. Yes. And so the puppy was respectful, was saying, I understand that because coming, invading space is a way of uh, challenging for something. So the puppy took a big line. If you see the puppy do that, like let's say you're over there where the vacuum cleaner is and you call the puppy and the puppy's here, the puppy walks all the way around, reward the puppy. Say yes and pet. That's a good, desirable behavior. Um, and when, they, when he has a high value item like a bully stick, Maybe try to do that when she's in uh, the long-term confinement area. Um, not that they, she can't have it together, yes. Uh, but I think that because he's had stuff taken from her and now you have a puppy that's taking all my stuff, so now I have something I want to keep it myself. So high value items like this can cause fights. So I make sure that if the dogs have them, they're only done with supervision. And if he has one and you can't supervise her, she goes in the long-term confinement area so she can't potentially go up to him. We want them to practice stuff. Uh, practice appropriate behavior. And again, I would recommend once or twice a day that he gets some time to go into a room by himself without her there. So he has some time and maybe use that as an opportunity to do a little training, do some of the training exercises with her. Um, let me see, so positive eruptor is to give the dog's attention, give them something, uh, a reason to come over to you, then give them something better to do so they don't go back to whatever it is. Remember, good attention, bad attention, same thing. Um, let me see, um, rules, uh, not allowed in the kitchen when preparing food, not around people when they're eating food. Definitely do not give food to the table, that will train them to do that. Also do the pre-max. For the long-term confinement area, don't ever lift her over the fence, Make her because that's training her to go over it. Make sure she goes through it, and when you, eventually for that, you could just go to the, go to the door of the long-term confinement area, tell her to sit. If she sits, provided she knows what sit is. If, she, if you say sit, she sits, then open the door and let her out. So instead of her crashing out of there and all boisterous and zooming around the room, you're asking her to demonstrate a little self-control and listening to me. And then when I do that, I'm rewarded with the privilege of yes. freedom and I get to go run around. Now, if she doesn't do it, it's not punished. It's not a punishment thing. Um, and for the pre act don't do that with, uh, with her while she's potty training. If she's gonna have an accident, she doesn't have the ability to control her bowels, but eventually you wanna get up to that point. Um, let me see, what else? Um, one little thing for her, when you are walking her, Use that positive interrupter. There is like, you got about a two more, two more week window that you can use this. So if you walk her, have a crap ton, get one of these mini treat pouches from PetSafe and have a crap ton of treats with and those high value treaty trainers. Every time she gets the end of the leash, the instant she gets the end of the leash, make that kissing sound, but have a treat in your hand. So she gets the end of the leash and you hold the treat, she runs back to you. If you do this enough times, what will happen is she'll feel the pressure of the end of the leash. She'll just turn around and come back to you without needing the kiss because we've conditioned and helped her practice that behavior. Mm -hmm. And eventually, when you're walking around, she gets the unleashed and turns around and come back to you. I would also mark eye contact. You're walking down the street, mm -hmm. and if the camera's, uh, if I'm the camera and, and I'm the puppy, yes, and then a treat comes down. Don't take eye contact for granted. Um, and so mark anything. You mark drinking water, going to the dog bed, getting off of the couch, you know, going into the long-term confinement area, all that fun stuff. Um, this is one of the lessons we teach puppy dogs. We call this the middle cue, teaching the dog to go here. This is kind of hard for dogs to do, be underneath us. Now I'm sitting, so it's a little bit easier for him. Uh, but yeah, go through those lessons. Uh, let me think, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, I think that's just about it from what we covered. Uh, now if you have questions on this stuff, whatever, please text me. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. Set up those play dates in the puppy class parent page. Other puppies that you meet, invite them to that puppy class parent page, because the bigger that thing gets, the easier it is for you to set up these play dates. And remember that you know at least one play date a week, but make sure it's positive. And do the treat outs. I've got to remember that. So the treat out, I'll show you right here. Now when you do this, make sure you have treats with you. So I'm gonna to toss a treat to get him to go forward, but I'm gonna show you how to do the treat out. So I'm gonna show him how to treat. I put my hands here on his hips. I pull him back, and as soon as his head turns, there's a treat. He's already got the one in his mouth. He doesn't want to chew that. But you want to practice this in the house without the excitement of another dog. So if I feel this pressure. I'm turning around and I'm looking at it as a positive, happy thing. Oh, you have the bully stick in your mouth. That's what it was. Um, and so don't do it when he has the bully stick. Uh, but when you're doing those play dates, 
the more treat outs you do early, the less you'll have to do later. Remember, you can, it's very easy to teach them to play rough. It's almost impossible to teach them to play gentle. I like to think of dogs that have 10 levels of energy. Zero is asleep, 10 is as crazy as he gets. I would say this is level one energy. At any time the dogs get to level five energy, they get a treat out, whether they're having the best time or the worst time. Interrupt earlier if you need to. There's no, it's not a negative. So if you're in doubt, give a treat out. Um, but if you never let them go above that 50% energy level, you're gonna help them practice separating and calming themselves down. Also, you're not getting that range of energy where they're so crazy that the mistakes might happen. Um, let's do one more drop for the camera. You're in the habit of not dropping at this point in time. Like, no, you want me to do it on camera? Now also see the tail? Mm -hmm. See how it's, watch. Well, you saw it when you're watching the playback, you'll see that it got stiff when he was doing that. And when it kind of pulled away or relaxed, it, then we got a little bit more wiggles. And if I really have to give him a drop, and I might go like that. Well, he has another treat in his back. Now again, this is residual because he's used to you guys stealing stuff from him. So, but the more you practice doing what I mentioned earlier, showed you earlier, eventually they drop, he just spits it right on out. Well, this is my buddy Rad and our friend uh, Cora. See, I said at the end of the session I would get it right. You got it. Uh, is asleep under the couch, so we're going to let her do her thing. Uh, and this is the roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it. <laughs>